Welcome everyone to Fish Easy on a Saturday evening. We are looking at some rainbow Pseudomugal fricatus. These are a beautiful species, also known as a nano species. And as you can imagine, um, their activity makes them very attractive. The males are constantly dancing, the females don't have as much of the yellow but uh, welcome everybody to a discussion on these fish I'd like to also uh, welcome everybody who may be on a replay so please uh, leave a comment below if you're on the replay crew and it's, it's certainly good to see a thumbs up already thank you very much for that but um, these particular fish as you can see are just a delight to have they're just so active and they're fun to watch the blue eyes on them just glow if you're able to see it, I don't know how you are. Hi, Joe. Welcome, Joe, to Fish Easy on a Saturday. 411 information. In this tank, we have also uh, some black rams. So uh, the black rams are here. Uh, this is a female that had just recently laid. And uh, she's uh, out of focus. Okay, let's see if I can get her in focus. Okay, there we go, a little better. And the babies here are different ones. Ray, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us today. As you can see, um, these black rams are from my star pair. They're all black. Every one of them has come in exceptionally good looking. And that's a great asset. And then of course, when I put them in this tank originally, what happened was the rams were very skittish and they were in the back of the tank. So they were hiding way in the back and they would hardly come out. Now, the next step was to, what can I do to make them feel more comfortable? So once I put the Fricatus rainbows in, as you can see, they inhabit the top part of the tank. In fact, if I hold my camera like this, you don't even see a black ram anywhere because they're usually in the bottom part of the tank and then of course you go down to the bottom and you hardly see any any rainbow fish that's just the way they are Let's see if I can get a better look I don't know if I can zoom in on her or not she's kinda there we go, it's a little better it's one of the female breeders um, these are not threadfin rainbows which are I've also bred the same way and I used to have uh, quite a number of them I don't have any of those in my fish room at the moment the uh, thread fins the thread fins are also very very interesting they're a little more delicate the uh, fricatus I find to be a little more robust and uh, a little easier to to breed so the bottom line is one of the greatest assets to having fricatus rainbows is that they make your other fish feel really at home and at ease. So all the other fish are just jumping around, playing around in front of the tank. There's just no problems with them. And so, so as you can see, this this the ten gallon here has uh, some in it, and next to it, of course, I threw some in there also. And uh, this is with uh, some epistogramma. These are the McMasteri, beautiful fish, I tell you. Kind of a skittish fish. Uh, at least I have found them to be very camera shy. But uh, in this tank, uh, I, I thought I had a pair. I, I suspect now it's two males. I don't see any uh, behavior that indicates to me that there's really um, a male and a female. It's, it seems to be just a dominant male and a subdominant male. So I'm on the hunt for uh, females. I didn't find that I, I purchased uh, two pair and they were the best female guesses we made and both turned out to be, I think, subdominant males. So there were no females in the batch when I went to get them. Now, uh, again, here's one more. Here's uh, a shot of another tank. These are with checkerboard cichlids and they're looking super sharp with the uh, platinum tiger barb just kind of doing a jump in there in the middle some checkered barbs and oh that's kind of funny checkered barbs and checkerboard cichlids together but um, the skittish fish all seem to go 
seem to get along great when you've got blue-eyed rainbows just whizzing around at the top. It just gives them a really nice feel. It's sort of like putting a bunch of hornwort at the top of your tank and then fish uh, feel the protection. So now we've looked at the reasons why I, I keep them and um, I, I know there's there's a number of you on there. Hello Stephen. There's a number of you if you have a question we'll we'll stop uh, and pause to answer a few questions here and there when you have them. I'm going to show you uh, right off the bat what is the um, uh, breeder setup. Here's a breeder setup. So a breeder setup consists of a tank. Now this one I'm growing out. Um, those are plecos. In fact, those are the 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 red plecos. They're ancestrous uh, plecos, but they're known as super reds. So I've been growing them out, and uh, they're in this tank. And that's all that's in here, and I put the Fricatus adults. Um, but I've learned that you get more success if you put just one or two females. Do not put more than that. And there's the female. There's one female in here, and there it looks like four males. So one, one female and about four males, and I'm going to explain why that is. It's kind of an unusual reason, but it works. And I just throw a mop. This is made out of uh, yarn. You can find a ton of different uh, videos out there, people who've actually made these mops. Hello, Red Laser. Thank you for joining us at Fish Easy. So this mop is just hanging there. And, and what I do is I take the mops and I put them on a, on a, uh, a loop of some sort, but at the top, there's a bar. This this is a bar. I'll explain what the bar is. And I just have my mop on a on a tie tie wrap, and it just hangs there. And then this this bar goes across, comes out of my um, right, goes right into one of the sections of the uh, lid, plastic lid. And then the other end of the bar just attaches here on the shelf ledge. Then I can just move that to where I want it. But basically. The mop is at the front of the tank, and it's by design that way. I, I I always thought, you know, well, you know, I gave it a try, and they put the mop at the back of the tank, and I thought, oh, they maybe they would do better because if they see me, they they go zip into the back. But what I found is that um, it doesn't seem to matter where the mop is because I'm not in the fish room 100% of the time. And, I'm, and I only once in a while have ever glanced and seen them actually spawn. But here's the action. Female, that one, right there in the center, zips over and gets close to the mop. The males immediately see her getting close to the mop, and the males go flying over, and they will jump into the mop with her and do a little wiggle dance, and next thing you know, eggs are popping out, and they're on the inside of this mop. I hardly ever see the eggs. You can go through the egg, the mop, and get the eggs, but I don't even bother um, to look for them. I just take out the mop once a week, and you can do that because the eggs don't hatch right away. It's, it takes over a week, so maybe 10 days, 14 days. So what I'll do is every every Tuesday I pull out this mop, and uh, for a couple weeks I will just put it in a. Um, let's go over here to the the actual um, hatch hatch out so last time I put the uh, mop right in here and if I'm start start to watch the surface um, I'm going to just watch the surface of the um, of this particular tank and when I see it fry they'll start to pop out and start just hang around on the surface I don't see any in this one right now and I don't know if I've seen any in this one. I don't know if I have any examples of newborn fry at the moment. But that's what happens uh, another week. So I'll do about two weeks of mops per container and then and then wait. And then this one might start getting fry. And then as soon as the fry appear, I start feeding paramecia. I, th I throw a little paramecia in there and also uh, after a few days, start with the baby brine shrimp. And they do very well. So, um, 
that, that's what happens and the, the fry start growing and so they'll grow in here. I will also put in uh, a, a small air stone. So what happens? Now I, I took these and I can take the whole container and then I'll dump it into a two and a half gallon. Like for example, I have one on the floor there. That's a two and a half gallon. Well, let's take a look at uh, uh, a two and a half gallon right here. This is what um, it looked like after These are all, so there's so many fish here because you're looking at fish behind the fish. I don't know if you can see. Excuse me a second, let me see if I get a better position. Can you see the fricatas? Zipping back and forth in this little two and a half gallon. Just ignore the rams in the back. But uh, yeah, so in here, they just start growing out and I feed them uh, baby brown shrimp. For a while, I also threw in some Lucipinus babies and they eat on the bottom. So I have uh, catfish on the bottom. So again, I'm layering my tanks because that way if you, you notice that the fricatas will eat mainly all along the top, they just basically jump for the food that comes in and is mid-water. And they don't eat the water, the uh, food in the water um, on the ground. Here's a better shot. Can you see that? That kind of shows uh, just without the rams in behind. You get a nice longitudinal look through the tank. And these guys, they're, they're small, but you're already able to sex them. So at this size, they're almost ready. I could almost sell them at this size. Now, why do I only use one female in several males? Uh, can you even know what the sex is? Well, the, the males are the ones with the pom-poms. Look at the pectoral fins, and you'll see the pom-poms. They look like little yellow, little um, widgets on the ends of their fans. So they just kind of twitter them, and they're like flashing them. Females don't have those. So at a very young age, you can see the males and the females and tell them apart. So now, what happens is, if I had more females, what I've discovered is you'll get a lot less eggs. Now, how do you get a lot less eggs with more females? The answer to that question is very simple. When a female comes over to the uh, mop, sometimes she's interested in eating the eggs. If she can find them, she'll eat them. But if she's the only female in there and these males are patrolling, they're not so much... In, the males don't seem to be interested in the eggs. They, they seem to be more interested in, in breeding. So here they are, and the moment that the female gets close to the mop, two males, one or two males, will immediately start to say, hey, oh, here's a couple sparring. It's starting to show up. Oh, I almost saw some sparring going on there. When they spar, these things are spectacular. They show off their fins. And... Yeah, those two males are going at it. So then what the males do is basically they keep the female busy by saying, hey, do you, do you, you, you're trying to breed, you're over here, and you are in the, in the mop. So that's why I get a higher production because she doesn't have a chance to go fishing for eggs. I think she doesn't have a chance. She, she has to spawn with them because they're pursuing her and then she's in and out and then she's on her way. But I never see a female with a bunch of males in the tank just over by the, the spawning mop by herself eating. So that's the trick. That's how I keep um, high production um, by just having uh, several males and one female. So here's a tank for example. I'm going to put, um, uh, right now there's just some uh, electric blue rams. So these are mostly females. Uh, I got one male in here that's kind of showing off this guy. But uh, what, what I'll do is, uh, in this case, um, I'll throw the mop in this one and then throw uh, a number of, I could be collecting several mops. And they're like, it's like doubling up on your tanks because basically um, I can use, I can be breeding for Carter's at the same time I'm breeding something else. So the fish room has um, a number of tanks like that. Uh, these are just grow out tanks. This wouldn't be very appropriate because uh, I'm trying to get these grown and then I, I, I 
pull the fish out and they move on and I get new fish in here. So these are constantly changing. But let's say I have a, a one like this one. I'm just got a stationary group of cichlids. These cichlids don't seem to really be sticking their nose in the mop. They, they probably would. It, now the tiger barbs in the story. I would remove the tiger barb because tiger barbs, uh, they will pick and look and hunt and stick their nose in the mop and they, they'll eat everything. So that wouldn't be a good compatibility um, type of fish. But in most cases, you'll have them. Let's see if there's any questions. Uh, hi, Jiggy. Welcome on this Saturday at Fish Easy. And thank you very much for the thumbs up, everyone. And thank you for uh, joining us for a little Sudamugal for uh extravaganza. Now, there's another fish. Uh, we're going to take a look at another fish in the fish room. It is also uh, related to the Sudamugal. So what I'm going to do tonight, uh, I won't bore you with it, but for the next time, next week, you're going to see it. But tonight what I'm going to do is uh, behind these breeder boxes is a tank. It's planted. And I have other blue-eyed rainbow fish, gorgeous ones. And they're um, Illuminatus. You see the pom-poms on the males? So I have a couple females in there, uh, mostly males. So I think this is a good setup. Oh, this is a fricatus too. I got a two baby fricatus in here. I just kind of, oh, he's, do you see him? The one back there was spreading his fins. There's the female right there in front. Blue eyed, no pom poms. Then the male's displaying in the back. That's kind of nice to see. Beautiful fish. These are a little more um, tricky, but uh, what I'm going to do is um, cut back the, the plants to a lower level. So first thing I'll do is, let's see if I, you see the plants in the back? I'm going to cut them back, cut them down to size, so that everything is about, let's see, about this level. I'm just going to come back, they'll grow back in this tank. And then these fish will have a chance to swim more in the upper areas. I'm not worried about the uh, the red the red shrimp in there. They won't hurt the eggs or anything. But I'm going to put a mop and start rotating the mops out of this tank. See if I can get some. Um, I've I've raised these before. Same way. I'm going to put the mops in there, and then it will be the only breeding uh, item. It'll be in the corner. Maybe maybe both corners. I don't know which one they'll they'll go with, but. Uh, the mops, uh, I just collect them after I use them, and here's uh, a whole a whole slew of them that need to be boiled. I'll just boil them for a minute and kill any bugs, just kind of sterilize them and reuse them. I like to put them before I reuse them. They pick up a lot of, um, if you got planaria in the tank, they'll find the planaria will find your mops, you know, uh, little worms and things for sure, but uh, that that's the kind of thing that I will definitely have. Now, um, just give you um, another idea. It just takes so long to to get eggs, you know, or hatch hatchlings. They grow very slowly, so don't don't be surprised that it takes quite a while. The luminatus have a stripe down their back from the dorsal to the caudal fin. You can almost see it in this fish. It's uh, like a luminescent uh, on the top. Steiner, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're talking Luminatus at the moment. We, we went through the Fricatus. Uh, I do have... Oh yeah, I might remove that cichlid. There's a couple of Epistogramma borrelii in here. Two males. Young males. Maybe I'll remove those too. And there's a couple of uh, rams in here as well. So I may have to do some cleaning out just because I want to make sure they're species compatible. And what happens is sometimes like a rams, these are black rams, and the rams will get through the, the weir, the jump or whatever. They get frightened sometimes and they just hop into the tank. So you'll find, uh, I find little rams in the tank. And, uh, oh, and I don't worry about the plecos. I have a pleco or two in there. Uh, looks like a couple of albinos. Don't worry about the plecos because they don't they don't tend to mess around in mops. They just don't like them. They their their suc suction cups seem to go really nice on leaves of plants. I have an Amazon sword right there. I'm hoping it takes off one day. It's 
kind of a newer plant, the fish room. Maybe it'll go, maybe it won't. I had a, I had a tough time with these, uh, these other uh, plants, but now they're taking off. But it took, took a few months before I finally got them going. I wanted to show you all something new in the fish room. It's um, uh, little jars. They're not jars, actually. They're actually, I think, vases from the dollar store. I got these for $2. And I'm using them instead of uh, the little critter, critter cages that I was using. Now, give you an idea why. This this is kind of an interesting setup. Last night I was playing with this. This is um, Cynodonus lucipinus. So there are catfish in here, down here in the bottom. Now I don't. You can see them now. But they're in this container. And it's round, so there's no corners. I like that fact. That's, that's, that's a design plus. But also, um, you'll notice that the little filter, the, this tiny little filter, it's just the tiniest filter you can find. And I, I just have it running in there, and it just sits off the bottom by these little tiny feet. And it's just enough size off the bottom. And they, the, the catfish love to have a hide. And so they're going to do very well in here, I can tell you that much. They're gonna really like that. So I was. This was a good batch. I got all these fish. I think Wednesday. I don't know. I I, I pulled them out in the midweek this week, and I tell you, there's a lot. I I look like the two three hundred eggs on this batch, and I was seeing a lot of them go bad. But by the time they hatch, you can see uh, Stubbs Aquatics. Welcome. Thank you for so much for joining us this uh, late Saturday night. And we're looking at uh, the lucid pinnace from this week's batch. I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to throw in some micro worms here, um, here uh, tonight. So start feeding them, giving them some, some food in there. Over here, uh, these are, um, these are hatched angelfish. They're, they're platinum angels, long fin platinums. They're very nice. Let me see if I can zoom in. I don't know if I can zoom in or not. My zooming capability isn't that great, but you see the white eggs? You see between the white eggs and the wall? It's moving. Let me try shedding some light. I'm going to use a flashlight and see if I can get the flashlight to shine some. There we go. There we go. Now you can see the baby angels. Yeah, we got, we got a good batch coming up. But they're not free swimming yet, of course. But we'll see how they do in this. Um, and of course, the, I have some strawberry rams here. Uh, this is from the strawberries line. And uh, we'll see how they turn out. There's about 30 in here. But it stays very clean. It's easier to clean. Um, there are some disadvantages. These things don't have a pore spout, so they kind of drip when they, you try pouring them. That's kind of a negative. I'm always looking for the design in these things finding something cheap, finding something useful, finding something well designed for the purpose we have. Um, the angels here are, you know these angels, I, I change their water, 100% water change constantly, almost two or three times a day. Still kind of clouds up. But they've gotten used to me feeding them and they see me, they come up to the top and start hanging out. Yeah, but they're, these guys are at the point where I've got to start finding a dividing them up and putting them in bigger tanks so there's there's a couple hundred in here yeah probably this week they'll be they'll be moved but anyway this is the concept it's a new design but another thing is the footprint you see the footprint is much smaller so I can put uh, one two three four five I can line up more of them along here and for that reason tonight or tomorrow I'm going to work on the uh, air system and I'm going to actually extend it. You know, I just have to extend it from that point and put another set of valves and that will give me control over some more lines going in. Um, th this setup here is quite interesting. So this might be the way to do lucipinus, the proper way to get some filtration, some uh, air movement, give them a hide. And uh, we'll see how that works out. I, I'm, I'm really anxious to see if this is a better design than what I was using before. Before we leave this spot, I just got to show you my favorite black ram batch. They're doing so well over here. There's not a single 
golden one in there. There's not a single German blue. They're all black. They're all black rams. They'll get darker as they grow. Yeah, very nice batch. Looking forward to uh, seeing those develop. And uh, again, at weekend time, it's time to move fish. These are all angels. They're also going to be moved into a tank. I think I might move these into a um, either a couple. I think I might move them into a couple of tens. I don't know. I have to move some fish around. This is the way I was doing the lucipinus before. I was using these containers, which isn't a bad idea. I still need to work on getting a cover and uh, working that out. It's not impossible to do. And these work out pretty decent. Um, I might move them into this kind of, kind of uh, contraption once they outgrow this one. This was pretty small. But once they outgrow, but this is kind of nice to be confined so that they can find the food and they can start growing together. So that's the idea. Hope you enjoyed uh, some of those shots and some of those uh, thoughts concerning the rainbow fish. Any questions, uh, Craig Donager? Welcome. Thank you. And Mellow Planted Aquatics. Hey, hey, how you doing? Welcome everyone to Fish Easy on a Saturday night. Thank you so much. Earlier today I was uh, at the fish ex expansion and I was over there adding some of the fish that were in these tanks. I um, took a bunch of German blues, a couple hundred over to the bigger tanks and so they're they're getting accustomed to that. We'll see how it works out over there. Any questions about uh, the uh, blue-eyed rainbow fish? They're a nice, they're a nice fish. I, I haven't had any issues. I did lose one batch um, a while back. Uh, it was only because I did not have sufficient water changes going on that little tank. It was a two and a half gallon and and I let the nitrates get too high before um, uh, it affected them and I lost most all of them. It was a, a good reminder that you cannot um, overcrowd fish without constant care. And uh, even still, it's not good. How do you control your production when it comes to rams? Jiggy, that's a good question. Um, I can't control... And Divyang Sony, welcome. Thank you very much. And Hatchery Man. Great questions. Uh, I can't control that the rams will lay eggs, but what I have learned is that the rams, um, when you get too many of them, I, I know that, I know that sometimes I just pick out the best ones and, and I have to do some culling. I think in every batch of fish, angels or rams or whatever it is, you'll always have a few runts, you always have a few no growers, and unfortunately that's just the way life is. So by the time they get to sellable size, uh, I like to have just the best. I like to have only uh, sharp looking fish, perfect looking fish and nothing else so let's see uh, kvh nanofish okay there's a nanofish uh, individual right here on the site tonight thank you for this video i have one male rainbow uh which which species of rainbow do you have doa oh that's terrible so i'm really sorry to hear about that where are you located too um, so uh, the other answer uh, regarding demand, just to go back to it, is um, right now there is plenty of demand for rams, quality rams, good looking rams, because it seems as though when Canada orders rams, they get in um, pretty much a lot of junk. Fish, fish are very low quality and many of them die sometimes. Um, they go through periods where maybe most of them will die. I don't know exactly the reason why, but let's see if I turn the light on here. 
I have uh, overhead lights too. I don't know if that will help for the fish room. Yeah, yeah. helps a little bit. So uh, it turns out that I have uh, contacts in lots of places, lots of stores. So uh, finding buyers for the fish has not been an issue at all. It has not been. And then, of course, as some of you, I recognize your names. You've already come and bought fish from me a pair or two here there in the past. So and there was another question. Um, what was the other question? Um, how often are you feeding the angelfish fry? Uh, three times a day on baby brine shrimp. Three times a day for baby brine. I, I, I tend to watch their stomachs. And the reason for that is because you can overfeed them. Because they just eat and eat and eat until their stomachs look like, uh, look, they look like balloon angels and they're not, you know, they're not balloon angels. So. I've learned that as long as their stomachs are kind of full, looking, smooth, round, and with kind of pinkish because of the baby brain shrimp, they're eating enough. Don't feed more. They'll just overeat. And then uh, once they go on to um, pellet size, I want to show you something interesting. Uh, my earlier batch, I, I had a, something strange happen and the entire batch went bad um, they all died off they were with they were in a, in a breeder box and I don't know why what caused the death but in the breeder box next to them I, I had these electric blue rams so when there was only a few angel fish left I took what angels there were this one there were about six I think and these two survived by just taking them out of that breeder box putting them in with the electric blue rams and they did great they needed to be with other fish. If you just have one or two in a breeder box, they kind of like, don't like it. But, but notice the size difference. At one time, these angels were exactly the same size as these electric blue rams. It's amazing. But the electric blue rams are very slow growing because they're a mutant, the mutation uh, of the German blues that, that tends to grow very slow. These are a little older, three weeks a little older, and you can see there's not, oh, and then there's some strange, there's another, uh, this is what you call another contaminant. It looks like I have a contaminant here, because that's a German blue. I don't know. Sometimes I get these contaminants. They jump from breeder box to breeder box. I would not assume that came out of my electric blue pair. All the rest did, but, but, but don't laugh, because uh, the same thing happens over here. I noticed that in this, uh, I think it was this one, where was it, over here, oh yeah. So over here in the black rams, there is one electric blue in here. Don't ask me how he got in here, there's another contaminant. See him in the back, he's coming up, he's right there. Here he is, an electric blue. Now I know my black rams did not produce an electric blue, they don't have that gene in them, they're not, but another contaminant, so. I get these mixed up fish, I just leave them in there because they seem to be the right size and they're doing great. I'll pull them out or separate them in the end, but there's no point in, I mean they don't know the difference, they're not racial or anything like that. They don't notice, hey you're not black, hey you're not blue, hey you're not gold. <laughs> you know, here's, here's uh, the same brothers and sisters from a batch and as you can see some are gold some are black the ones that came from the other pairing where the the father was more of a kind of a blue black kind of a german blue look crossed with the black female as you can see i got all three i got german blues blacks and golds well i know where the golds came from i know where the blacks came from and i i guess the german blues came from a fish that uh this fish that the genes it was like more of producing more throwbacks. I, I'm not impressed with this pair. In fact, uh, tonight when I went over to the other room, I actually I actually pulled all those those males. The males I from the black from the blacks, the black rams that I'm not going to include in future breeding. So, they just get pulled and and uh, I'll um, find somebody who wants them one day. 
but uh, yeah, the, you, you just have to be selective, and that's what selective breeding is all about. You know, you select the best and don't use the rest. So that's uh, that's it for the question so far. Let me see. Okay. Let me see here. Looks like I was missed some dialogue here. Um, most import are too small and have white spots, but I guess some shop owners don't care much. Um, if the white spot, are you referring to ick? Because when you get them in imported, that's usually what they have, and you have to treat them. Yeah, the overhead. I think it does look better. I, I had forgot to put them on. I passed up lots before I found them. I got lucky when I got my rams. They're not the best, but they're okay. I passed up lots before I found them. Well, great, Craig. You know, I really, I really like the idea that you can pass them up. Now, in my case, I had an offer to give me some black rams, and I, I didn't have any other options. And so I, I got them, and the three males that I got and the three females. The three females weren't decent, but I've not been able to breed them. The uh, two of the females passed away, and they also had uh, genetic deformities, so I wasn't, I wasn't worried about it. I only have one female left, and she laid eggs once, and none of them were fertile. She, she may have been so aggressive that she just chased the, the male away, I don't know. And then the, um, the males, they all survive, I have them, but they're all kind of a lower quality. Yes, Jiggy, they do slow down, that's, that's, that's true. After um, the rams get a little older, they, they don't produce as often. However, they do uh, produce um, bigger batches when they're more mature. But what I've also found is that you have the, the male that's constantly harassing the female, she doesn't have a chance to really regenerate. So what I like to do is take remove the females and put them in a, a bullpen. I have a tank down here, a 20 gallon long, and uh, I've got a bunch of females in there, and maybe just one male to kind of spur them all, spur them on, as it were, to make sure they're, they're kind of kicking. And when I see the female that is like, she's ready, She'll join up with the male over in the corner and kind of meet up and I usually have some time when I see that I can grab her and then I can put her with the male I want because I have males in each one of these tanks. So you can see there's there's the breeder males here separating and then I will, okay this female, that's uh, uh, electric blue for example. So she's going to go in with one of these two electric blue males and poof, you know, once I put her in, if she's ready, she's her um, OB depositor is, is showing out and she's plump. She's going to lay within a 24 hours. So I just do it that method and it seems to work great. So then I can pull the eggs and then after that she can go back to the pool before the male harasses her too much. That seems to be the best way to do it. But to answer your question directly, um, um, how long do I keep the breeders? I do not keep them forever. Uh, I have found that that um, when you're talking about a fish that only lives a few years, I mean, some people have reported that they, they have rams five, six years of age, but I think their breeding cycle and their breeding in the first couple years after that, they're, they're not really producing. I think that they're too old. So basically, really, conceptually, you know, I, I replace my breeders when a better male or female comes along. So I'll try to look through the uh, young ones that are coming up and then always pick out for myself one or two that are very promising. And if they come out to be the better, they're the better ones and they're the ones I keep. So these are the, the breeders. I also have uh, some on this side. And uh, in this case, the one female I mentioned a minute ago. Let's get this right. Here we go. 
this female is very black. She's not as dark as when I first got her, but she's with a male from Israel. And the other female, I mean the female here, she seems to be jet black. Very good quality, but uh, she's the one I mentioned. The only, the only one time she laid, she laid all infertile eggs or had infertile for whatever reason, the male, I don't know. Um, but I keep this pair together. I don't break them up because they seem to be compatible. And uh, she, she's overdue. She's overdue. I think she would lay eggs. Um, maybe I will. It's been a while since she's laid. I, many, a couple months, actually. So she may be older, a lot older than I think she is. Because I bought her from somebody who got her from somebody else. And so who knows how long, how old they were when they were received initially. So the question is, how old is she? I don't know. So whether I'll get another batch out of her or not. The other little trick is to remove her and I'll take this pair and maybe I will find a, a, a tank over there maybe with a different uh, neighbor to spar against. The males can tend to look through the, through the glass and that's what really gets them going. Sometimes I think it's really good to, to so that they can see each other. There's an electric blue right there. Gorgeous fish. It really is. Look at that. Hmm. Yeah, so there's this is and this is uh, this is M. This is a tremendous black. Next time uh, one of my black females comes into condition, uh, going right in here with him, that will be nice. So the idea is is changing a tank can also um, trigger uh, a pair to spawn. And it's just sometimes they're in the same tank and for whatever reason they just get bored with it and when you give them a change up they, they sometimes go right right down on eggs. So I hope that answers your question. Oh Sandy, Sandy welcome. Hi Sandy, glad you made it. So my blacks haven't bred yet, Craig says, and I've only got a pair of them left out of six. They were paper thin when we got, oh yeah, if they were paper, that is really, really sad. I'm really sorry about that. Um, I, I know what you're talking about and the condition I got, I was able to pick up a few black rams from Fanatics that were from Czech Republic. I got four. One of them had an issue with the eye, and it didn't make it. It actually uh, jumped out of the tank for some reason. Maybe it was distressed or whatever. It jumped out of a slit. They're not usually jumpers. I've not found ramps to be jumpers, so I don't know if it was just chased by the other ones. And then the other one um, went light, and I have one more that's thin as a rail. And even though I've treated him for worms, I've treated him, I went through quarantine, all that, trying to put some weight on him. But out of the four Czech fish that I got, I only got one female left that's halfway decent. So, in fact, I didn't think about it. That's, that's probably a female that's probably ready. Let me see. Let's just take a look at her real quick. Maybe she's ready to go onto this male that I just pointed out. I'm doing some... I pulled out a bunch of, um, let's see if I can get the camera to turn. Here they are. One of them is thin. You can see she's got kind of a belly, sunken belly. You need to keep working with her. But the one behind her is uh, a Czech female. And uh, she looks nice. Doesn't look like she's quite ready though, in my opinion. Not quite ready. Yeah, this, this particular tank, I, I dropped the water level because I took out uh, the German blues that were in there. And I'm going to, tonight, put um, the water back up and then also take um, maybe some of these here from the um, workbench and maybe get those down there so they can grow out in a 20 long. So let's see what else comments. So Sandy, thank you so much. Okay, do you have any line of ram from Mark? Marco Detroit. The answer is no. 
Yeah. Uh, no, I don't. And he's the one that is got the um, what he call what they call now the the um, blue knights, right? Um, yeah, the blue knights. Not beautiful fish, just gorgeous. Um, I'd love to to play around and see what I can do and get some of those myself. And with uh, some of these tanks of black rams coming up, I, I will have plenty to pick from, and that's probably uh, what's going on. Yes, yeah, Sandy, I just went live a little late tonight because I was over at the uh, expansion. It was uh, so much fish movement going on. In fact, my my room is still a mess. Um, cleaning out some tanks and treating some tanks, blah, blah, blah. You know, it just goes on and on. I just couldn't stop what I was doing to the talk and um, I'm waiting on six one s to replace the dead one s as I paid ooh one s six new ones okay sorry I'm waiting on six new ones to replace the dead ones as I paid that's a lot of money where did you get them from did you have to I know aren't you in the United States did you have to, did you ship them from a long ways? Oh, okay. Thank you for responding about the fork tails. Uh, KBH says, um, just has the one. And where are you located? Are you near Toronto? If you need some uh, ricottas, it's certainly not a problem in the, in the GTA area to get them. Um, I, have, I have plenty here. Australia? Oh. Craig, I didn't realize you're in Australia. Wow, all this time I didn't, I never really picked up on that before. Okay. Or you ordered them from Australia. Oh man, twelve hundred dollars. I can imagine to get those from whether they survive a long trip like that. So, um, yeah, thank you, Sandy. It's been. Um, 47, 48 minutes, and um, I need to get get cracking on some of this. In fact, I, I made a tea. I, I hope it's still warm. Yeah, it's still warm. I got some uh, tea going here. It's I like to drink um, I like to drink um, black tea, but this is uh, Earl Grey. Hmm. Yep, pretty good. Not as hot as I like it. I just forgot about it and made it just as we started. So, what else is new in the fish room this week? I did watch um, a couple of videos, but nothing worth mentioning um, that I can recall right now. Nothing caught my attention to so that I wrote it down. Um, I did... Um, I did uh, talk to Greg Sage, and he's, of course, as always, working on uh, a future video. He's got one in the works. Always has one in the works, so that's what I need to do. In fact, this weekend, I will be putting out a short video. It'll be a short, it's not a live stream. It will be a video, and it'll be short. And it will just be about uh, restarting your micro worms. I've done it on the live shows before. I'm gonna go through all the ins and outs and just show make it a quick um, um, tutorial on the Walter worms or micro worms on how I harvest them and why I harvest them the way I do. Let's see, I catch all the questions. I want to make sure I don't leave anybody out there. Um, does anybody else have any pseudomogal Oh, over at um, over at Fanatics, they have a few left of the Ivanstoff, Sudamugal Ivanstoff. It's a, kind of an attractive little nano fish. I like them, but um, to be honest with you, I didn't get them because I don't really have another tank to dedicate to them. But uh, and I don't know if I'll be able to get them again, just because I've never each actually seen them available before, but they had them there.
Yeah, thank you, Sandy. I know. It's red laser, new spawns on the Synodonis. You must have joined us late because I showed you uh, my latest spawn from Wednesday where I got two, three hundred eggs. It was amazing. Um, those ones I showed earlier, were you on the line? Maybe you have to watch the replay. I showed you my new setup for the baby uh, eggs. It's a round, round vase with a small itty bitty filter in it and it's got a little hide at the bottom for the for the catfish check it out so it's kind of uh just just start over it doesn't take long i i think i i mentioned it after about 10 minutes right after i pretty much highlighted all the fricatus uh, items so that's it for tonight if there's no more questions, I'm going to let everybody get back to their Saturday night. Ooh, discus and altum. Peach painting, very nice. Very nice. Okay, well, thank you all very much. It's been great. It's been uh, wonderful to have you. And if you haven't left a thumbs up, it's always helpful to do so. If if you're on the replay crew, please just mention it. I do answer questions. If you think of something later, please um, be my guest. And, and um, if you would be so kind as to um, just leave a thought below and I'll answer it because I always answer all the questions in the comments. It's, um, as always, Fish Easy on a 411 information program tonight. And I hope I was informative. And I hope it was helpful. So, most of all, enjoy your fish and uh, keep it real. Good night.